Now that we've looked at a distance joint, let's look at another example of a joint, a revolute joint. Okay, I'm excited about this. Are you excited? I'm excited. Okay, here we go. So a distance joint. Now, here's the thing. A distance joint, remember, we had two bodies. Let's say we had a square and a triangle. We combine those with a distance joint, which connects each body together with a given length. One of the things about a revolute joint that is incredibly different is that a revolute joint binds those two bodies at a singular anchor point. What is that anchor point? That anchor point is the point around which those bodies revolve. So you can think of it essentially as, you know, if we have this, if we, if we have this fixed plate and we attach this triangle to it and we put a little screw in it and it was kind of loose, we could spin that triangle around that plate, if that makes any sense. And you can see in the example what we're going to use this for is to create something that, that resembles like a windmill. So something spinning around, um, spinning around a singular point. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we do the same exact thing we did with the distance joint. We have two bodies ready to go, we define a joint definition, a revolute joint definition, and then we set all the parameters. What are the parameters for a revolute joint? Now, um, there are a bunch. <laughs> um, but one of the things that's really key is uh, when we initialize it is what, in addition to setting the two bodies, we've got to set where that anchor point is. So we've got to, we've got to make sure we set where the anchor point is. And, um, so that's one of the parameters, the anchor point. Other parameters we're going to set are, is the motor on? Now, motor, you ask yourself, what? There's a motor? So this is one of the cool things about Box 2D, is it has these concepts built into it that you can suddenly kind of like, there's like electricity in the world and systems are gas burning something, whatever. But we can actually turn this motor on so that this autonomously will spin and it will spin with a certain force, with a given torque, um, which is, you know, if you wanted to have a self, a driving car or some type of spinning windmill, this is where you can use um, revolute joints and motors, which is, pr which is pretty great to see. So we can turn the motor on. There is a, um, a motor speed parameter. There is a motor torque parameter. And the other thing we can do is we can limit the angle. So this is the thing. There's so many possible ways you could kind of configure and set a revolute joint. The key thing for us to really be comfortable with is the beginning. We have two bodies. We make the joint definition. We set the anchor point, And we let it go. Now, we could also constrain the angle. We could turn a motor on and off. And we'll look at that stuff when we look at the actual code. And once we've set all that, we can create the joint. OK? So let's see if I forgot anything crucial. Let's go over here and take a look at it. So here's the example running. And we can see we have one fixed body and one body that's not fixed. Both of those are attached with a revolute joint. Now, the motor is not on. So as the particles just hit the thing, it kind of just seesaws back and forth based on the force of where these sort of particles are randomly hitting it. But <laughs> if I click the mouse, the motor is going to be on. And you can see it's like forcing itself to spin now in a clockwise direction. And we can affect the, the motor speed. So what's going on here in this example? One thing I should point out is we have a particle class. And uh, let me move this off to the side here. We have a particle class, which is all of those circles, right? So th that's the object that controls the box to the circular body that's falling from the sky. We have this box class, which describes a box, a sing which is used for both of these um, bodies that are connected with that revolute joint. So then we're doing the same thing we did in the distance joint example, where we have a class. This class has a reference to two box objects and a joint. So we're using a class to kind of describe a multitude of box 2D bodies. We say, like, every time we want a windmill, we need this box and this box and a joint that connects them. So if we look here, we've got these steps again. Define the joint. Revolute joint has a nice function called initialize, where we say, hey, here's the joint. This body, and the, it's going to connect box one body, box two's body, and then here's the anchor point. The anchor point is at box one's center. So that's really key to see in the initialize function, the third argument is the anchor point, which is the point that, where the two are connected to each other. And then we can see here are some properties. We can give it a motor speed, a motor torque. Is the motor on? It's off at first. So you can see, and you can look up in the manual, there are a great, there's a longer list of properties. And when I have this system that I imagined, that'll be this magical thing where below you will see the list of properties just appear that I'm talking about. But anyway, that's 
something that's going to happen in the future when these videos are better. Anyway, um, so one thing that you can see that's a little bit different about this than the distance joint example is we are keeping a reference to that joint object. Why? Because we want to be able to turn the motor on and off. We might want to affect its speed, its torque, all that kind of stuff later. And we can see that's what we're doing in the main program. When we click the mouse, we say, hey, toggle the motor. And in that function, we we can call, we can set the uh, motor's uh, uh, status to false or true, which means it's off or on. Okay, so hopefully this gives you kind of an overview. Again, there's a lot of details here that I'm just kind of kind of glossing over, and we'll see what's missed and what's confusing. But the point is here, it's the same thing. We need two bodies. We need to create a joint object between those two bodies and set a few parameters and then let her rip and see how it goes. So I would say um, as an exercise, I can't think of one. I should have had one prepared. But you could, for example, try to uh, create the wheels of a vehicle with a, a motor joint, see if you can get it to drive itself. There's actually something called a wheel joint in BoxyD, but try using a Revolute joint first, see how that works. Um, and I also, yeah, I remembered I forgot something in the previous video, but maybe I'll go add that back in real quick. Okay, so, um, yeah, thank you. Good